we're trying to move our clients to be. That's why I talk about forgiveness and self-acceptance and integration so much. So, okay, you were a piece of shit. Okay, you did this behavior. Okay, you lost X, Y, Z. Okay, we're not going to forget that that happened, but how can I love myself in spite of? And that's the beauty of astrology. The beauty of astrology is this is coming. This thing in your life is coming. You're going to go through this hard time. You're going to suffer through this. You may lose your child. You might become uh, uh, homeless. You might date a bunch of guys. You might be a drug dealer. But you can still become whole in spite of all of those things. But that takes a level of self-worth and self-acceptance that is very, very hard to reach. Very hard. That's why I say awareness, you've, you're almost there. If you can bring the client to awareness that they have this, that they have that shadow, that they are that, we've done a pretty good job. We've done a lot of help towards that person. So understanding the shadow is super, super, super important. So take out your chart so we can see what your shadow is. So first, your opposite sign. I've told you what it is. And now your descending or your seventh house cusp. Now what I think is so fascinating about the fact that the descending or the shadow is a seventh house cusp is that it rules marriage. What's the first relationship you know? Your parents. Your parents. And lo and behold, we want to be nothing like our parents. And in every marriage, and not every child is lucky enough to come from a two-parent household, but the relationship that the parents had, again, reflects the shadow, whether or not you knew them living together or not. My daughter has no recollection of my relationship with, my, with her father living together. Yet her shadow is Aries, lo and behold. Or the word that sort of summarizes the relationship of those three years of marriage. She not, does not have any memory of her father and I living together. So we are sort of, quote unquote, I don't like the word doomed, but just for lack of a better word, we're doomed to repeat this in our marriage, in our relationships, in our friendships. The seventh house is that of the marriage and friendships. Why are we going to repeat our parents' flaws in our relationships? Because we're trying to see our wholeness, right? But we don't understand that. Consciously, we, we are not aware. We do not have conscientiousness. I did not intentionally fight with the father of my children so that my daughter's chart would say, oh, look at that, war. <laughs> my ascendant, my descendant is Gemini. And certain things in my parents' relationship that I can recognize, oh wow, those are very, very Gemini traits. And I have to watch out for those. In my marriage, those Gemini traits were also reflected. So I didn't choose my parents, and I funny enough didn't choose my husband, but normally you choose your husband. Um, I was arranged. Um, to make the chart live out. The chart lived out my shadow, my descendant, because of, of the individuals that were in my life, the story, namely my parents. So why do we live out our descendant or our shadow in our marriage or our relationships or our friends? What is the function of that?
No one? These two are working and I don't know what. Um, you're, you're creeping. Come on, you know. Put that away and focus. Why do we have a shadow and why do we have to live it out with our marriage, our lovers, and our friends? Yes. Because that's the part that our parents lived out and that's the part we're trying to keep hidden. That's the part we're trying to keep hidden, but why do we have to do it in our marriage or with our friends? Because... because it's around you? What was that? Is that the only thing that's around you? Well, that's the main thing that's around you. And your relationships are the place where you're going to see those aspects that you don't like about yourself. That's going to be the perfect mirror. So I can tell someone, oh, your parents had XYZ kind of marriage. But what I'm really saying is you observed that relationship and you started saying, I want to be like him, I don't want to be like her. And so you chose the ascendant to be like mom or dad, the alliance. What if they're in the middle? What if they're acting like both parents? Everyone does act like both parents. That's a great question. The thing is, there's going to be a part of them that they dislike. So your alliance is with your dad. Right. The part of you, and maybe Eric acts out like your mom. <laughs> and she rolls her yeah, eyes. That's my dad. That's the part that makes me mad. Okay, so what is it about your dad, a.k.a. Eric, that you don't like? He can never remember anything. Okay. Like, I talk to my dad, I swear to God, my dad thinks I'm still like a two-year-old, where, you know, when two-year-olds just talk and they say stuff, and you're like, yeah, yeah, because half the time you can't even understand them. Yeah. Um, he thinks I'm still two, because anytime I talk to him, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the? Are you going to listen to me? And then Eric does the same crap. Eric, will, you'll say something to him and completely forget. Whether it's him talking, or it's me talking, or it's someone else talking, he's like, wait, what did you just say? So he wasn't listening. Uh, never. Okay. And then cries for everything. So what's your descent? Do you have your chart? No, because it's opposite. Oh, okay, okay, I'll bring it up. Um, what's your sign? Libra. Libra. Do you remember your house? What house your son is in? Well, well it's opposite, Libra. right? It was in Leo. No, but the son was in what house? Oh. oh, you had Leo on the second, which means you have Aquarius on the second. I'm just calculating. So if you have Aquarius on the second, you have, you have uh, Sagittarius. Oh, you're Sagittarius. Let me. And you've got Gemini. You've got Gemini on the cusp. So one of Gemini's qualities is, what's the key feature of Mercury? The God. He's got winged sandals. He's going from here, he's going from there. He's going from here, he's going from there. He never stops to listen. He never stops on earth and is focused. Geminis, by nature, are flitting and floating and going and, and, and coming. They tend to be very thin because they never stop. They tend to have anxiety. They tend to have panic attacks. They tend to be very, they tend to be very ADD, unfocused. He's looking at me every single thing you say, and he's like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So, she attracted a partner. Now, mind you, I have the same descendant. I have those qualities in myself, but that isn't what I got from my parents. There was a whole other story. But everything that you said, not paying attention, being distracted, all of that, that is Gemini. Okay. Well, and by nature, Aquariuses are just in the sky because they rule the sky. But on your chart, having a Gemini descendant is all of those qualities that you just listed, you have. And I'm just going to be a bitch and pick on you for a moment. What did I just say? Oh, they're not listening to me. They're on their computers. <laughs> exactly the thing. That she said he does and dad does, she was doing to me. It worked out perfect to show a point. We do that. What we have to do is say, damn, this person does this to me. I don't like it. That's a shadow aspect of myself. Let me just pay attention. This is not to beat yourself up or anything like that. Let me pay attention. 
you where I do that also. And that's when we start becoming aware. Would that be to that person or would it be to anyone else around? Anyone. Okay. Anyone. And that is a very key function of an individuation. It's having the awareness to say, somewhere in this chart, I also have Mercury or Gemini in this case. And lo and behold, if you take out her chart, she's got Gemini and Mercury somewhere. That's the beauty of astrology. It's you on a piece of paper, exactly what you're complaining about. I can show you a picture. Look, you have that right there. And the person is like, oh shit. Or, no, I used to get this a lot. No, 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 that's not me. Uh, yeah, it is. Because I used to be a very pushy reader. And now I've become more compassionate. Um, <laughs> but I used to be like total bitch. When I first started, oh my god, I would tell you how it was and like right down the middle. Now I'm you know, well, this, but no, 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 you do have it, but, you know, and now I've gotten a little more softer and kind. Um, so I'm sweeter in my delivery, but I still say what I have to say. But there's a place where you physically can see, oh, I have that quality. But as therapists, you guys need to start saying, hmm, I don't like this about my mother. Where am I just like her? And again, this is the important thing. Where am I just like her can be the exact opposite. Being just like the person is the same as being the exact opposite of the person. And your story, you're the devil and she's the angel. That's the exact opposite. That's the pair of opposites, of opposite archetypes. So where's the good place? Right in the 48 to 52, right in the middle. Accepting both the devil and the angel. Integration. That's why it's an awareness, integration, and then you can do it differently. If you don't have integration, you're just going to be swinging 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0 to 100. You're going to be exactly like them, or you're going to be exactly the opposite. Now, I didn't go and become an addict. But lo and behold, after 45 years, I tried pop for the first time. I went out to happy hour and sat at a bar and had a drink for the first time. That's not addiction, but I was trying to become that. I have now understood that I am that. Well, I have to have it show up in my life. I'm not a drinker, I'm not a smoker, I don't care for these things, I've got a medical marijuana card that I have permission to use, I never used it. Obviously addiction isn't going to be, my thing is going to be the escape. My thing is going to be the spirituality. So I have to figure out how to integrate that into me. You have to figure out how to integrate the stability and the mothering and, and the family and all of that unit without feeling constricted and restricted. But not going the other way of saying, I'm going to give away my kid or I'm going to shoot my mom. And I still support you on that. But what I want you to do is find a happy medium. Because when we go the other extreme, we're not happy either. And so most clients will tell you, I am the opposite. I am nothing like my mother. Red flag, red flag, mayday, mayday. Listen, they are telling you to listen because they're just in a zero to 100, zero to 100, zero to 100. And that is your payday. That's where you're going to take them home. But if you're not listening, you're going to miss that. Some quality that your client comes to or you have to an extreme, extreme cleanliness, extreme perfection, extreme saving, extreme obsession with, I don't know, you name it, that is a red flag. You must look at the other side of that because you are rebelling against that. 
So what is someone who is perfection, perfection, perfection? I must get straight A's. I must be perfect. Um, I'm going to pick on a student. It's not here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I think I know who it is. Obviously. Perfection, perfection, perfection. Straight A's. You know why, right? No. Because um, high school and middle school was the opposite. So she wanted to do that. Okay. So my job is to find out, mm -hmm. when were you not Good. so perfect? When did you not strive for straight A's? Because that's what the person is rebelling against. When we weren't paying but for it. But then it goes another level. You must have the person define or understand or explain what they mean by perfection. In this particular case, it's straight A's. Is straight A's learning? No, you can learn with an F. Absolutely. So is the value, because it all goes back to value, is the value perfection, straight A's, or learning? I'll tell you, it's not learning. It should be. And now you have your shoulds and your woulds and your coulds, and you've got to watch for that too. And that's very important that you listen. But if I point this out to a client and say, uh, you miss a lot of class, you turn in stuff sometimes late, a slew of things, how can you learn, just as an example, if you're not in class? Oh shit, that person has to question the values. So do I want a piece of paper to reflect that I have straight A's? Or do I actually want to learn so I can be effective at the career path that I'm choosing? This is a really big issue in university. It is. And one of the things that I like about adult learners and schools like Kaiser is that you guys have made a choice to come and learn. Whereas a lot of traditional students, high school to college, are probably doing it for their parents or that, that's just what they did in their family and everyone went to college and you just you know, went in a row, you know, did things in order. But that's a value system. I was like that. Yeah. I accumulated degrees and degrees and pieces of paper. I wasn't a straight A student, but I had pretty good grades. And in, um, in my master's, I had straight A's, and my PhD, I had a perfect, practically a 4.0. So I, I would say my doctorate was probably the only one that wasn't like about accumulating a degree, although there was a little bit of that because I wanted to tell my mom, look, I finished. <laughs> because she thought after the divorce and the kids that I wasn't going to finish, so it was kind of like, look, I did. But that was definitely more for me than for her. But I thought that if I accumulated a bunch of diplomas, that I would be worthy. Because the cult that I grew up in, the cult leader, in her office, she had diplomas all over the wall. Ugh. Of every single person in the cult that went to school, that she, of course, motivated them to go to school. The person had no merit. The same thing as, I don't work, the spirit gives me the money. Same bullshit, but I didn't know that at that age. So I would look at all these diplomas as a teeny baby. Oh, if you have a diploma, then you are of worth, then she will love you. So what did I do? I collected and collected and collected diplomas. The doctorate, I had already left the cult, and I did it more for myself, but I do recognize there's a little bit of that with my mom. Well, guess what? Gemini has to do with education and validation. So in my attempt to collect diplomas, I learned nothing. And so one of the things I say a lot is I am a fraud. I'm a fraud. I have a degree, but I don't know anything. And so I have slowly, in certain parts of my professional life, 
learn things, like being a therapist, obviously I can teach that kind of stuff. Um, I do something called the Akashic Records, I can teach that, I, I feel very competent in that. I have areas in my life that I feel competent because I did it because I learned it, not because I accumulated a piece of paper. And so you have to go down to what is the client valuing and what is the story behind that? And so Sam says, there was no grades in high school and middle school. So guess what? Now I'm swinging in the other direction to get straight A's, but nothing has changed. It's the same behavior. So maybe get A's and B's, not strive so much for a 4.0, come to class, learn it, apply it, and that's more of a happy medium. And so that happened to me, so I, I know that, you know, like I know that story very well. And obviously it's stuff that comes up in, in sessions with certain clients because it's part of my story. I've integrated that though. The more you integrate these aspects of yourself, the less that type of client shows up. Can I ask a question of real quick? Um, the word listening has popped out a lot. And my mom, something that she tells me is, has your professor taught you how to listen? Because I know that's part of what you guys learn in class, is that you need to listen. Because the thing is that when her and I speak, I will admit, I interrupt her, and I don't let her finish her fucking sentence because I already know where it's going. Because she's attacking you. Exactly. So and I, I want. What is the human being? Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, no. What is the human <laughs> being? <laughs> survival. Yeah. Human beings are rooted in survival, and if you are being attacked, there is no way in hell you can listen, because if a bear is chasing you and wants to have a conversation with you, uh, no, bitch. <laughs> And so at that moment, your reptilian brain kicks in and says, I'm being attacked, run for your life. You're not running, but you're running your mouth. You gotta stop that, it's fight or flight. It is the human being's defense mechanism. In counseling, you're not going to, unless you're in a certain type, there are styles, I've told you about this before, our ABT is one of those, uh, behaviorism has some of that. I was talking to one of my colleagues the other day how I said, I don't attack my clients. And he's like, oh, I do. I tell them the way it is. Granted, he's a military guy. He's worked in environments with like a problem team. I don't work in those areas. So I'm not going to attack you and insult you for you to get shaken up so maybe you'll change behavior. That's not what I do. And so what you do with her is you're saving your life. That insult is the same as her putting a knife to your your throat and you having to defend yourself. No. Go ahead. Because the thing with her is like, I've now realized that when we talk sometimes, I'm no longer putting in the effort to um to attack. Like I'm not I'm not going to to her and saying, oh you well, because this, because like how I used to do it. I don't do it anymore. I when so she'll stop me when I'm trying to explain something to her and she'll be like, Does your professor not teach you to listen? Like, listen, listen, you're not listening. I'm like, but I'm trying to explain to you what I'm learning in class and how I've learned it to better assist you in listening your, to yourself like but she doesn't get that like she she immediately goes to i'm not listening i'm i'm simply attacking her and i'm like okay do you recognize that you attack her i do recognize that and does she recognize that she attacks you no i don't i don't believe so okay i don't either Knowing what I know about her, I don't see she has that introspection. Yeah. But you do. First and foremost, attack or war or any of that is Aries. Happens to be, you know, coincidence that Paul is ascendant is Aries. 
So the way she's going to show up in the world, that's our personality, is with that. You're going to view life as a war. And you're and Capricorn, so you have to win. Yeah. That's part of her story. That's a very, very strong combination, Aries Capricorn. And you said your mom's an Aries. No, my my son's an Aries. Oh, your son's and an Aries. And my mom is a Taurus. Oh, oh God. So. Okay, sorry if it yeah. ends a Taurus. That's very stubborn and that's yes, very in, my, in her way. So the only thing that you can do with that person is she accuses me of not listening, yet she's the one that doesn't listen. Does it bother you? It does, okay. but I've learned to cope with it by just, I stay quiet, I pretend like I'm listening to her crowd, okay. and when I don't like something, I walk away. I'm okay. like, at this point, so you I'm have found survive. a way to navigate this yeah. so that it's not war, 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 yeah. war, because you also don't want to live in that. Yeah. Now, because we're talking about self-reflection you know, self -reflection and introspection and our own shadow, where do you not listen? Um, when... Or where do you attack instead of listening to the other person? I'd have to say um, in relationships when I see something that's not in my value system, so to speak, um, I tend to fight for the other person to understand my my belief. Okay. So maybe there. Okay. So that's a perfect example. In relationships, you become your mom. Yeah, pretty much. You want to drill it in them and that they listen. Because she's basically saying, doesn't your teacher teach you to listen? Basically, she's saying, listen to me. <laughs> Instead of arguing and hearing yourself, listen to me. Yeah. And now you're saying that you do this in relationships. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Your descendant gives you some insight to your shadow and what you can do to incorporate that into yourself. You happen to have a Libra ascendant. Libra is the sign of diplomacy. So what you've learned with your mom is, I can have someone who's belligerent, I can have someone who's attacking me, and, but I can be diplomatic and check out or whatever, or walk away. You've learned those skills. Those skills can be applied into your relationship. And so you can do those sort of things. The other person has a chance to talk. Now you want to be heard. You have, an, you have a need, as we all do, that's a need that we, that we want to be heard. So how you can do that in relationships is address that. This is where it helps to, to look at our shadow and to say, if I do this, what can I do? What what um, what efforts can I make to help the relationship? If I had you and your partner in front of me, and I hear you saying this, what I would try to do as a therapist is, okay, let's negotiate so that each person gets heard. So you get five minutes uninterrupted. You get five minutes uninterrupted. Both people have spoken. That's one strategy. Some therapists recommend. Um, you talk on Monday, you know, Paul doesn't respond. Tuesday's Paul's turn, you don't respond. Wednesday, it's his turn. That's yeah. one strategy. And you start working with the client to help them navigate this thing of I'm not being heard. So you've got I'm not being heard. What's the natural other side? I'm being heard or I don't listen. So you've got to help them navigate somewhere in between here. How can they hear and how can they be heard? You said not heard, heard. You could, you could use either one. Heard, hear, and be heard so that the relationship moves forward. Forget the other person. Let's say it's just your client. My concern is that my client learn a new skill. Do it differently. The answer to doing it differently is in the 48 to 52. It is in the medium 
It's in the middle ground of the home and homeless, of the escapism and the reality. That's the only place to do it differently. And so your job is to move your client to that middle ground. You can do the same thing with yourself. Write the two extremes on a piece of paper and go, how do I get